Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow, and today I want to talk MMOs. MMOs are, against the recent history of the genre, somehow having a bit of a resurgence. With MMOs like Final Fantasy XIV reaching peak numbers during a content drought, New World having its recent release, which had an incredible week one success, the most played game on Steam, and of course, big MMOs like Lost Ark that's coming to the West soon, or Ashes of Creation in Dev. So incredibly, one of my favorite genres of games that had really fallen off over the last decade, well, it seems to be coming back in action. People are clearly interested in a good MMO. My history with MMOs begins with my first time ever really playing an online game, starting with OG RuneScape, my first MMO ever when I was like 10 years old. To this day, long time MMOs are still powerhouses alongside, you know, new upcoming ones. Maybe you yourself are interested in MMOs. Maybe you want to try something new or return to a world you left and could do with some information, maybe some suggestions. In in that case, this video is for you because today I'm talking about five very different MMOs that you should consider. And we're beginning with my most questionable suggestion that I kind of feel forced to include World of Warcraft. It's undeniable that this game is in a weird state from what it once was. It is still one of the most played MMOs in 2021, despite everything, and there's good reason for that. Undeniably, it's a polished, well-produced, and rich MMORPG with a massive history and with prestige that, well, it has rightly earned. It has one of the most satisfying class and combat design systems ever made, with some of the best PvE content even to this day. The incredible Mythic Plus dungeon system will be something great to see in other MMOs and overall where the game is still strong it is very strong. Plus, as an MMO, it still caters to many walks of life. For those of you who like to collect transmog or mounts or just complete achievements. For the social players, the RPers, there's there's still a lot of good you can enjoy with current age WoW. But yeah, I have to talk about it. You know, the Blizzard allegations they're dealing with currently, the horrific practices that have gone on at that place for a long time. And you know, there's the game itself. How Blizzard have kind of made some sort of formula of an infinite grind every patch as everything you had done becomes irrelevant and you're forced to log on to manage your weekly Azerite, sorry, your artifact power, sorry, your anima system. You know, before the allegations, WoW had been in a bit of a declining state for a long time. And with those allegations, damn, it's a dire time for WoW. In my opinion, there are incredibly strong aspects of current WoW as well as incredibly weak parts. Meaning I can still really enjoy the game and can even suggest it to you, but only for one patch before the grind really sets in, before the issues become hard to ignore. That's normally, say, three to four months of a really good experience. And to me, that's well worth it. But with everything going on, you know, with Blizzards, I don't know whether I'm going to quit their games forever or maybe I shouldn't. And I should continue to support the active devs who are people who have dealt with the allegations and are still wanting to make good games. But these are choices we're going to have to make for ourselves. Ultimately, WoW is still one of the most popular MMOs in the world, despite it all, and that's because it can still be a lot of fun for those who lean into the good parts. So it is one to consider, but it is also the bottom of the five I'm going to suggest today. Let's move on then to a bit of a breath of fresh air when it comes to devs and how they interact with their community compared to WoW. RuneScape, the ultimate spreadsheet MMORPG in which you uniquely earn the right to do quests you find. First needing to complete specific missions, tasks, you know, reach specific levels of specific skills before then being allowed to actually accept and go on that quest, which will then take you on a wild journey filled with self-aware humor, clever puzzles, interesting characters, and often deep history of the world itself. By the end of it all, you earn an incredible, satisfying reward, huge chunks of XP, and unlock new things like new regions or aspects of the game. Then you've got the many skills that you have to work on where you're steadily improving your experience within the game, like say, agility, which will let you run for longer or traverse important shortcuts that you've long since eyed with envy. Maybe you want to do something as simple as make a bow and sell it on the market. No problem. First, you're going to need some wood, so now you need woodcutting skill. Then you need to fletch that wood into your bow, which is obviously the fletching skill. You'll need to go gather flax and make string. You could do with some arrows, though, for that bow. That requires ore to smell, to then craft into arrowheads. You'll need arrow shafts, and you'll also want feathers for the ends. It goes on and on, all intertwining with one another. But by the end of it, you've created something of value to you or other players, and you've also gained experience, so you can now make better bows, better arrows. You you 
go on to refine the process to do it all faster and more efficiently. At its core, RuneScape is a unique and satisfying game and definitely one of the best I've ever played. Just like World of Warcraft though, current RuneScape, known as RuneScape Free, is filled with systems that the player base has issues with. They did make a lot of big core changes that were controversial. Many things in current RuneScape are good, are impactful, there are wonderful quality of life improvements that make the game a better experience. So RuneScape Free is something I've always wanted to properly try and give a fair chance. But it's so hard to do that when old school RuneScape is right there ready and waiting. It's the original RuneScape from 2007, but with lots of new and important features that the devs have carefully added over time, which the community have voted on and only is added when the majority decide it. So you've got these two versions of one game, both with a lot of merit and reason to play them, which is why to this day, RuneScape is still one of the most played MMORPGs. And if you'd like to learn more, maybe in a more detailed way, I actually made a video covering this earlier this year. Up next then, the MMO I would suggest you third started in a terrible state with a lot of potential. It's the Elder Scrolls Online. Since its dreadful launch, ESO has had update after update, expansion after expansion, massive improvements that brought the game to a very respectable state. And that's because it really did have a lot of potential at the beginning. And while the launch was a bit of a messy letdown, the game has formed into a shape that it really should be. What is this realized state? It's a massive world of iconic Elder Scrolls regions to go and explore. They all have their own interesting stories, incredible voice acting, and varied questing. There's the wide variety of class designs, all based on its pretty unique combat system, which is a strange mix of MMO and of course Scrolls combat that while I think is a bit visually janky, it's mechanically sound and very fun. You've got light and heavy attacks and combos, attack and ability weaving, blocking, interrupting, evasive maneuvers. There's a lot going on and it feels really good. But despite the fact that this is an MMO, it still feels like a classic Elder Scrolls game, just on a bigger scale. Just like RuneScape, it's got awesome quest design, whether it's serious and lore focused or lighthearted and silly. And it's got clever systems like the Sky Shards that reward you with actual mechanical strength in exchange for fully exploring every region. They even managed to work in the bounty system from the main series into an MMO where, you know, you're stealthing around a town or avoiding the guards because you've got a bounty because, I don't know, you'd stole something. You've got the guilds with their storylines, main stories of each region, major expansions to follow, and it's something you can experience largely for free to begin with. So it's no surprise that ESO is as popular and as respected as it is today, and I think it's brought a lot to the genre as a whole. For a full video about ESO, and if you should play it, check out the one I made earlier. Now then, even above ESO, as an MMO, I would suggest you play right now. It might be an obvious one. It's New World. This is yet another interesting MMO to have on the list, like WoW, because I actually think the game has a lot of problems. In fact, in its current state, I would argue it's unfinished and was released too soon. So why would I tell you to play it? Because just like ESO, New World launched with a lot of potential, a lot of good. They just need to update it, refine it, and arguably finish what they started. I spent like 100 hours with the game since launch. I've tried each main aspect of the game. There's a lot of core aspects that are strong, and the world itself, my god, that's brilliant to be in. This is genuinely the most impressive MMO visually that I've ever seen. And the sound design too is the cream of the crop. The atmosphere is brilliant. So it's a wonderful world to just be in that kind of suits a grindy game like this where you might be chopping wood for hours, maybe you're chilling and fishing, and you just feel that it's nice to be in, nice to listen to, to look at and be a part of. When the economy is also entirely player driven as well, well that adds a lot of value to those gathering and crafting systems. So I think it's really good. Where the game is more let down is its long-term PvP and PvE stuff. The combat I think is pretty good, a real shock to me who thought it would be really dull. You know, you have two weapons, each with three abilities you swap between. I thought it wouldn't be enough, but it feels good, it feels fine. Honestly, the issues aren't necessarily with the player's abilities, but the enemies. Every enemy just works the same. They have like three attacks they can do, and the enemy variety as well is really minimal. The questing you're doing, my god, it's so dry. It's literally the same three quests in different places 
places forever. And worst of all, there's huge sections in that leveling where you run out of things to do. So what you end up doing is just dungeon farming, which does not work well, or portal farming. The dungeons are clearly rushed and unfinished. They're mechanically broken. Then the PvP is incredible when you're doing 1v1s, but when it's not 1v1, say a group fight where everyone's clumping together, well, the bigger group just runs over the smaller group and that's it. That's what PvP in this game is based on large scale fights. So that's a big problem to me. What New World needs is a massive discussion right now. For me, obviously I'd like to see the leveling be improved and actually finished. Maybe some more abilities for each weapon to use. A main thing is how enemy collision is clunky as hell. And sure, there's quality of life improvements to be added as well. But even with all of these problems, New World is insanely popular right now. And because of one important reason, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Maybe you fall in love with it long term Term, or maybe you just enjoy it for a while. Either way, I think both options are good, so it should be worth considering now that they've got those server problems fixed. But finally, we come to the point where I will now struggle to keep this concise. Final Fantasy XIV is the number one suggestion I have for you if you want to play an MMO. I know the hype for this game is massive and that can be off-putting, but it is correct. The game is incredible. I only finally played it this year, and since then I have really struggled to put it down. It's got an incredible story from start to finish. You know, each expansion, you've got a slow burn in Realm Reborn, a triumph that is the first expansion, Heavensward. There's a lot of setup going on in Stormblood, but God does it pay off in Shadowbringers. So yeah, the story itself does have some ups and downs here and there, but the payoff is worth it every time. You could play the game entirely just for its story, like some sort of strange single player game. But then you've got the incredible class design and combat. The classes are called jobs, and you can actually play every single class on just one character instead of having to make a new one every time. Each job has its own unique experience, playstyle, storylines, amazing progression as you unlock new core mechanics and abilities. And while things definitely do start slow while you have only a few abilities at low level, before you know it, you've got a lot of options. Various abilities on global cooldowns, many completely off the global cooldown, so you weave between them, making the pace of the combat really speed up. And as you unlock key aspects of that class, it just ends up evolving into something really cool. And then you've got all the MMO stuff like unique life skills, the collab events that are really fun, the top tier raiding that I've been diving into with my guild, there's housing, beautiful locations and regions to explore, and so many wonderful systems like, say, the Golden Saucer Casino just for social stuff. The game actually encourages you to spend time with others for fun, not only for serious content. There's things that I love as someone who's played like the peak of content in MMOs, things like, hey, there's actually best in slot items that you can go out and get and don't have to infinitely grind, a clear and consistent path of progression that ends and respects your time. It doesn't force you to come back every day. There's constant and honest communication from the dev team. Look at the recent Endwalker interviews. That really highlights how much they care about the game, that they want to make a good game, not just make something that makes money. But look, I gotta stop here. I'm just going to go on forever if I don't. Final Fantasy XIV is the best MMO I've played in years, and I wish I'd played it sooner, especially when things went downhill for a while. I strongly, strongly suggest you give it a try. I know you'll have heard the meme about the free trial, but you can genuinely play the game for free all the way up until the end of the first expansion. They just give you it. If you want to hear my honest thoughts about it all in detail when I first played the game earlier this year, I've made a whole video about it that you can go and check out. Since then, I've only had better and better experiences with the game, and I'd really like to make an updated version. But that is my list, the five MMOs you can play right now, some of the most popular ones to this day. Special shout out to other great MMOs I didn't mention, like Guild Wars 2, BDO, SWATAR, and more. But these are the ones I think are most relevant right now to consider first. Let me know your thoughts on all of it. I'm really excited for a Lost Ark's beta coming up. And of course, Endwalker, the expansion for Final Fantasy. It's going to be an intense month. Until next time then, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.